Hey guys, so uh, this video is week 16 through 19. Um, so now things are starting to get pretty neat. I'm actually starting to, well I was showing ridiculously early this time. I swear I was showing in like six weeks or something stupid like that. But of course when you're showing that early it's like people aren't really sure if you are pregnant or if you just maybe eat a little too many carbs or you know whatever. Um, but I'm actually starting to look like really pregnant. I actually think I have a picture at 16 weeks where it was pretty obvious. Um, so John at 18 weeks thought that he felt some movement. Um, it was a little bit early to be 100% sure, but he was pretty sure that he felt some movement from the outside. So I don't doubt that at all because I could feel movement from the outside right around the same time, uh, 18 weeks. And then at, uh, at 19 weeks, I'm looking at my notepad down there, uh, at 19 weeks you could actually see like, you know, the little punches and kicks, probably just kicks at that point because I don't think you can punch that hard yet. Um, but from the outside you could actually see movement, which that was really neat. Um, so I'm still having a lot of that uh, pelvic separation pain, especially at night when I roll over. Um, or if I try to lift one foot really high off the ground and, you know, um, and because of that, I'm having a lot of uh, back pain on both sides of my tailbone. And I'm feeling it right, right now, actually, because it hurts. And um, it's, it's not fun. It's like everything is so loose in there that, you know, muscles are working harder to keep it all together. And it's just, it's just a big old mess. Um, I went and saw a chiropractor, I think, right around. Are you scared? Are you watching a scary movie? <laughs> I hold you. I hold you. It's okay. Ah. <laughs> Go that way. Go. Run. No. No. I can't <laughs> ah. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, go under. Now go. No. What? What are you trying to do? Okay. Okay. So, I went to the chiropractor, and then it, right after that I had like an hour-long massage, which was awesome. My masseuse was a little bit chatty. Um, a little bit chattier than I would have liked, but whatever. She did a fantastic job, so. Um, and, uh, I've been having a lot of hip soreness. Um, excuse me. <laughs> a lot of hip soreness and all that, uh, after walks, which we go on walks a lot with Marcus, now that the weather's a little bit nicer. Um, I, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, I was working out when I first got pregnant, and I was just so tired the first trimester that I never went in. And now that it's gorgeous outside, we've been doing a lot more outside activities, and Marcus keeps me pretty busy, so I just canceled my membership. <laughs> um, so my energy levels have been fantastic. Um, they started picking up right after, you know, first trimester got over, but right around like 16 to 19 weeks, they like skyrocketed, and I've been like knocking stuff off our to-do list like crazy. Um, so, let's see, oh, I used a, uh, I finally found something to help me sleep at night because I was doing the thing where I'd wake up at 3.30 or 4 or 5 and then not be able to go back to sleep for hours. And uh, so I found this homeopathic sleep aid called Calms Forte and it is fantastic. I take it before I go to bed and it helps me sleep all night long and I love it. Um, and I've had more heartburn, um, it's been pretty bad. It's not all the time, but it's probably like three or four nights a week, and it's just it's just awful. It doesn't seem like it really matters what I eat. Um, I just think it's you know, I think it's all the relaxing. You know, it's just the the valves aren't shutting all the way, and so some of that uh, stomach acid is just kind of creeping up, um, and that's not fun. Um, so I had my uh, third midwife appointment with. Uh, with the original midwife that I went there to see. The first two were with um, were with the midwife that I hadn't met earlier. So I had my third midwife appointment and John didn't get to go to that one because my, uh, my Nana was sick and so he had to stay home and watch Marcus while I went, which was fine. Um, and uh, she let me know at that appointment that our insurance had said that they, they do cover her. She's a preferred provider or whatever, contracting provider. 
um, but that they will not cover her for a home birth, which is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so that was really kind of upsetting news. Um, so at this point, at 19 weeks, um, I got on the phone, I think I was 19 weeks at that appointment, I'm not sure, got on the phone with uh, my insurance company to try to see what was going on, and I got a couple different answers from a couple different people, but bottom line, every one of them said, no, we don't, you can't have a home birth. And uh, that really, really sucked. So in the next video, I'll do weeks 19, 19 through 22, and I'll update you more on that. But at this point in time, I was pretty stressed out about that. Um, basically what it boiled down to was either our insurance was going to pay for it or we were going to pay out of pocket because um, we are pretty set on a home birth this time. Uh, you might, if you know me, you know that we tried to have a home birth with Marcus and we have decided to go the same route this time and I, I'll do a, a whole separate video on why we chose that route again. So um, at that appointment I asked about, well before the appointment I was going to ask about if she had vitamin K drops instead of the injection for the baby right after he was born. And uh, but I read an article the morning of that um, it showed how much more effective the shots were for preventing... Um, hold on. Here, be careful. Oh, God. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. Is it scary? Okay. What's happening? Go see what's happening. <laughs> oh, goodness. Come here, sweetie. I hold you. I hold you. Oh, okay. I hold you. I got you. Ah, is this are there zombies? <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, so I read that vitamin K shots are are much much more effective, and so that was I just kind of nixed that. It's all right. That's one. That's one newborn procedure intervention that I'm totally fine with because uh, the alternative is very very scary. Um. So, I also heard the baby, the heartbeat through the fetoscope, um, at 18 weeks and 3 days. Marcus was sleeping, and I was laying in bed, and I put the thing right on my stomach, and it was, it was right there. It was very loud, um, and I was really surprised. I must have just got him in the right position, so that was really neat. Uh, before that, um, with the scares that I had at 12 weeks, I had used the Doppler maybe 3 or 4 times. Um, to check on him, make sure he was okay and everything, but, uh, yeah, so now I can use a fetoscope, um, which is very, very cool. I love listening to the sound, the actual sound of his little heartbeat. It's very neat. Um, and, uh, 18 weeks at this point, my uterus is, like, right at my belly button, um, and I can't, can't lay on my back for very long because it starts to, it starts to get really uncomfortable, and, uh, which is my body's way of telling me to roll over because my uterus is, you know, pressing on my blood vessels, and that's not healthy, so, um, uh, sleeping is going fine now that I have that homeopathic sleep aid, it's great, um, yeah, so everything's doing really, really well, I'm great, energy levels are super, which I, you never know how much you love energy when you, when you don't have it, like, I, that first trimester was just, it was horrible, I've never been that lazy ever in my life. <laughs> Um, and the reason for that, in case you don't know, is the first trimester you're growing your baby and you're growing your placenta at the same time, and that finishes construction right around 12 weeks, so that's why a lot of the times your energy levels pick up so much in your second trimester, so, uh, yeah, so that's everything for up to week 19, and the next video I'll actually get to do, like, the current where I'm at right now update, so I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.